What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to season finale of season 2 of this Road to Glory career mode and we are aiming to qualify for Europe, we will try to finish either in the 5th, 6th or 7th place so anything above that will be an absolutely a miracle and Ryan Mai and Tokmak had 2 chances, Newcastle away is always a really tough game we arrived in this game having 1 point from the previous three games Tokma goes through and it's almost an own goal oh my goodness what a let off for Newcastle that was really lucky and just before half time Uzuni does a brilliant skill move he passes it to Mai and that is a well worked goal and we are on, on one nil up and by the way guys if you enjoyed this series make sure to leave a like on this video it really means the world to me sorry that I took a little bit of a break from uploading this series but I'm working on many other career modes to come on my channel that's nine goals for Ryan Mai in 22 games and Newcastle had an amazing shot through Joel Litton we hit with so much power Gulachi was equal to it Gulachi has been our player of the season so far and Zubkov goes through after a brilliant through ball he has no option really so he decides to shoot the keeper saved it and then Mai's effort is blocked but we keep the pressure on Laiduni passes it to Tokmak Tokmak back to Lonkar and then Lonkar goes through and what a finish by the defensive midfielder Lonkar with an absolutely incredible strike and by the way the European Conf the Europa League draw was made today and Ferenc Varos are in it so if you want to watch this club in action make sure to watch the Europa League Ferenc Varos will play Red Star Belgrade and Monaco, another club which I completely forgot. Uh, no, Trabzonspor is the third club from Turkey. And what a pass by Mai to Zubkov, our right winger from Ukraine. He cuts inside and then he gets taken out by the defender. Eric Dyer, who is somehow at Newcastle, he lost his cool and Boli came on as a substitute or backup striker, scores and this is a very, very welcome boost to our European hopes because, uh, yeah, we were having a really a disaster of a run, one point from the previous three games, so we are back to winning ways, Lonkar was the man of the match. And this is how the league table looks like. So we are at the moment in a sixth place. And if we keep this position, we will qualify for Europe because Liverpool have won the League Cup. So sixth place qualifies for Europe 100%. We are five points behind Arsenal who are in fourth. So I don't think we can catch them. But let's try and push and let's try and win as many games as possible. And our next two games come against Watford and Norwich. Two teams who are fighting against relegation. So we can cement our European place if we win these two games so Tokmak passes it to Mai and then Tokmak makes a brilliant run but Mai decides to go back uh, Uzuni finds Tokmak and oh Mai yes oh my goodness Mai almost ran too far away from the ball but in the end that Tokmak pass was just about perfect Mai scores at the far post the goalkeeper had no chance going over to that side and Mai's 10th goal in the Premier League season and any striker who gets 10 goals in the league for a team who are not one of the top six sides is really really good in my opinion. Tokmak had another chance which the keeper saved and then look at this Tokmak takes it down brilliant skill move and Tokmak's shot is saved by the keeper Zoet so we were banging on the door but it's still 1-0 and Watford almost scored oh my goodness that was a big big chance but thankfully they missed and Zubko, Zubkov goes through but he loses his composure at the last second and Watford go through Derebashiru but Bulgulachi saves it absolutely brilliant and on the right hand side you could see Chelsea and Tottenham play each other so hopefully that will help us Uzuni goes to the byline he finds Tokmak who finds Lonkar who scored in the previous game and Lonkar scores again this guy is a defensive midfielder but when he goes forward he has actually a cannon of a foot what a strike that is no chance for the goalkeeper who to be fair made some good saves in the first half and this at this moment we were just cruising Body's shot is saved but that was 
offside in the end and uh, Watford had the chance, Zaza gets it but Gulachi once again makes another save and we keep another clean sheet, Gulachi has been absolutely amazing and we win the game 2-0, Tokmak was the man of the match and we get the transfer for, for Adam Long who is a 30 year old centre back, we signed him as a free agent in season 1, we just needed to boost up the squad and we wanted to ask for a moderate transfer fee and let's hope that uh, Sheffield United will accept it. So we are still in 6th place but Arsenal lost to Leeds United. So the top 4 is actually within touching distance because Arsenal played one more game and if we win the next game against Norwich we will be just 2 points of 4th place. That is amazing but the most important thing is just to try and win you know as many games as possible and Leeds United made the FA Cup final and Manchester United as well. I was uh, hoping that Leeds will win this game because man, I don't like Man United. And this is game week 35 and we play Norwich City and we rotate the team. The manager, his 100th game in charge, will he celebrate with a victory? We play the whole second team because I feel we have, can handle it against Norwich. This is our 100th game of our career. We already played 100 games as Ferenc Varos manager and Tomasz Kis passes it to Zakariasen who passes it to Boli. Can he finish it? Yes he can! Boli who scored in this episode already. He came back from a three month injury and he is very reliable. In season one remember he was our number one striker but then Ryan Mai took over. Absolutely brilliant. Boli equaled Ryan Mai's goal tally with 10 goals from just 15 or 16 matches sorry and one of the main reasons why we try to play the second team this much is you know we need to develop the young players and we try to develop the young players Norwich had a couple of chances which the goalkeeper thankfully saved and then Govrich's shot is blocked what brilliant defending by Norwich City so there were a lot of chances in the first half Santo with another shot which was saved by McGovern the second half wasn't as eventful but Norwich has a chance and oh my goodness Nitzuli, the backup goalkeeper who we signed from Shepshi, a team from Romania. What a save and then Santo blazes one over the bar. We held on to a narrow one nil win but Norwich actually had more shots so thanks to our amazing goalkeeper we kept another clean sheet. It's absolutely astonishing how many clean sheets we are keeping in this season's uh, career mode in the Premier League. We don't, didn't expect it. What does Curtis Jones, what is he doing at Norwich? So we are in sixth place, but now we are, uh, you know, four points ahead of Everton in seventh, but they have a game in hand on us. But look how tight it is. We are just two points off Arsenal, but if Everton win their game in hand, there will be four points between top four and seventh place. Everything is still open. And if Leeds United win the FA Cup, then 7th place doesn't qualify. Tokmak is leading the assist chart in the Premier League. Absolutely amazing. But in the last three games, we play Everton and Tottenham. So we have some really, really big games. And this is a real six-pointer. Everton can overtake us in the table if they win. But we are playing at home. And if we win, then we virtually guarantee sixth place and European football. So this was like a cup final. Ryan Maia gets the ball, pass it to Lonkar, and Lonkar has scored the third goal in this episode. This guy has really stepped up in the last month of the season. He's saying to the whole team, I'm a defensive midfielder, but I want to fire us to European football and Lonkar single-handedly making it to happen. Three goals and all three of them came in the run-in of the season but then Mai passes it to Zubko. What a shot! Pickford saved it but of course Everton will not uh, just lie down and they hit the bar. What an amazing shot from Marco Royce. Now that is an unrealistic transfer if you have seen one. Marco Royce playing for Everton in the Premier League and uh, Uzuni goes through that Everton defender it was really really awful and then Uzuni's shot is saved by Pickford. So this was a pretty end-to-end -end game. We are already in the second half 
Ryan Myers shot is blocked, but we will try to get the ball back with the high pressing and then Maia is taken out and he's injured, but Tokma goes through and he scores! Oh my goodness! What, oh, what, a, what an absolutely amazing sequence of events and Tokma has scored once again. Maia was taken out, very dirty foul, but uh, we are celebrating the goal and of course we are concerned if Ryan Maia is out for long then we have to rely on Boli for the last few games uh, he, he's the decent backup player to be fair but we are play, we are winning 2-0 we have beaten Everton 2-0 that almost guarantees us sixth place and European football next season. Absolutely amazing achievement and Longcar once again was the man of the match. This guy has really stepped up. In the last uh, month he scored all of his goals, three goals to be exact. Absolutely amazing and this Everton team is really solid. So as you can see we are at the moment in fifth place ahead of uh, Tottenham and ahead of Everton as well. But as you can see, Everton can still catch us mathematically, but we have to, we would have to lose all of our games and they would have to win all three of their games. So we are not 100% guaranteed top six place, but we have one hell of a chance. And here are our top scorers. So at the moment, thankfully, Ryan Maia wasn't out for more than five days. He just got a bruised shoulder injury, but uh, Zubkov's season was pretty disappointing. He only scored three goals. And now some other results came in. Man United won, but Everton lost to Burnley. So it's now mathematically impossible for Everton to catch us. Everton bottled it. They lost to Burnley at home, so Everton will not catch us. We are in the top six, so we qualify for Europe. The big question is which European competition? And we play Wolves next. Thankfully, my didn't get injured for too long, so he's starting. Santo also had a great season and he's starting in this one. And look at this, Lonkar once again goes through, but he, this time he couldn't score. But what a surprise Lonkar has been in the last few months. And oh no, what a save, Gulachi! Wolves almost scored. Absolutely amazing. That was all the chances that we could show you in the first half. And Santo goes through. He passes it to Mae, but his shot is straight as Jose saw. So this was a really tight game. Not that many chances to show you. And then Dineno gets the ball. And oh, Gulachi, please! Oh my goodness, what on earth! Look at how close it was to going in. Gulachi really was calmer than we were. We were absolutely frightened to death that he will drop the ball into the goal. Ryan Mai goes through, he has another shot which Jose Sa saved. And Wolves were coming and banging on the door. At the moment, Tottenham are leading against Newcastle, as you can see. And Gulachi with another save. Or was it a block? But no! We couldn't clear, clear the ball through Vingo. Wolves get the ball back. 87th minute. It's back to the wall stuff. And we get a free kick. Oh, referee, come on. Oh my goodness. Wolves almost scored there. But the game finished nil nil. It's not the best result, but I think Wolves were the better team in the second half. So we were okay with the draw here. And I think it was a fair result, as you can see from the stats. Wolves had a pretty solid side, so Tottenham won. And uh, that means that uh, Tottenham can still catch us. And uh, we have uh, one hell of an incredible final game in the Premier League. We play Tottenham at home, I think. And also Arsenal will play Chelsea. So top four is still on, but we can still finish in a sixth place. What is 100% uh, certain is we will qualify for Europe. The big question is, will it be Conference League, Europa League or Champions League football? So Chelsea play Arsenal and Ferenc Varos play Tottenham. And if we win, then uh, we guarantee us fifth place. But if Arsenal drop points and we win, then we can still finish in fourth. But if Tottenham beat us, then we can still finish in sixth place. Uh, Huminson and Harry Kane are the danger man for Tottenham. And really, all the pressure is on them. And it's the second minute, Civic with a long ball to Uzuni, who takes it down. There is nobody in the middle, but Lacroix! What on earth is he doing? That's the 
the most outrageous own goal that you have seen in this whole series and I think in the whole of FIFA 22 there was absolutely nobody even in the box from Ferenc Faros. Lacroix kicks uh, Hugo Royce's hand and the ball ends up in the back of the net. Absolutely shocking start to the game. But we are leading somehow. But of course Tottenham were coming back and Harry Kane quickly calmed us down with a goal and it's 1-1. Tottenham are right back in this. And to be fair, <laughs> that is probably what they deserve because after we scored that goal we just we were just defending Tottenham were attacking us with all they have they really wanted to get Champions League football and Harry Kane why didn't he shoot why did he lay the ball off to skip that's what I'm uh, the manager is trying to say and look at this oh my goodness Renato Sanchez how did he miss but it was offside anyway but that was amazing that he missed that chance. Arsenal Chelsea is at 1-1. So if both teams finish as a draw, then of course the we will finish in fifth place. But if we somehow could win this, then we can still qualify for the Champions League. And Tottenham were the, attacking with all they have and Kulachi with an amazing double save but especially this second save you have to see the replay of this look at how difficult that save is with a fingertip but it was all Tottenham since we scored that own goal which is uh, to be fair Tottenham scored it was all Tottenham we didn't have one chance and Harry Kane hits the bar so we were so so lucky that uh, it was still 1-1 and this is our first chance after the third minute Tokmak passes it to Santo then gets it back and then he releases Ryan Mai. Ryan Mai goes through can he score he hits the post incredible drama and in the 92nd minute referee doesn't blow the whistle Tokmak releases Uzuni this is the last attack of the whole season Uzuni passes it to Tokmak who passes it to Lonkar and Lonkar scores can you believe it with the last kick of the season Lonkar scores his fourth goal of the episode his fourth goal in the last month and Lonkar if Arsenal don't win then Lonkar fires us into the Champions League in our first season as a newly promoted club in the Premier League now we just have to wait for the results did Arsenal beat Chelsea or did Chelsea get the result the Ferenc Varos fans are clapping Loris can't believe it how on earth did we win this game this was the luckiest FIFA game I have ever played Tottenham scored an own goal and then an incredible deflected shot which somehow went in. Otherwise it was all Tottenham. Look, they had expected goals of 3. We had an XG of 0 0.9. We only had 3 shots all game. Tottenham should have won this game 2-0 or 3-1 or something like that. But somehow we managed to win it. Absolutely incredible. And of course Gulacci was the man of the match. No, it wasn't Gulacci. It was Harry Kane who was the man of the match. Probably Gulacci should have been because he made an incredible array of saves. Can you believe it? Arsenal didn't beat Chelsea. And somehow, on the last day of the Premier League season, we sneak into fourth place. Ferenc Varos are back in the Champions League, just like when Ferenc Varos played Juventus and Barcelona, like three years ago in the Champions League group stages, if you remember that. Absolutely incredible achievement. Norwich, Sheffield United and Millwall got relegated. Of course, Tottenham and Arsenal qualify for the Europa League. So Lautaro Martinez won the top scorer award. Boli and Mai both scored 10 goals each, but Boli played a lot less games. So incredible achievement from our backup uh, striker, Boli. And Tokmak, my favorite player in this career mode so far, has won the top assist award with 14 assists and also Gulachi kept 9 clean sheets but our backup goalkeeper had an even more incredible clean sheet ratio. 8 clean sheets kept in 13 games and Ryan Maia finished as our top scorer with 
13 goals. He scored also three goals in the cup. And Tokmak finished with eight goals. Uh, he improved by one. And Santos scored eight goals as well. Gavrich improved by two. He scored six. Uzuni scored five. And Tomasz Kish also scored five, but three of them were in one game. And Lonkar scored all four goals in the last few months, uh, last month of the season. So these are all our top scorers. But I think with this squad, it's an absolute miracle that we qualified for the Champions League. Thanks to Gulacci, who saved an incredible amount of shots. He kept 10 clean sheets, but also shout out to our backup goalkeeper, Nitsuli, who also saved quite a few incredible shots as well. He kept a lot of green sheet. Schoen's season has been a massive disappointment. 18 games and no goals, three assists and these are the players that have with that are on loan. Lucas Wilson, remember that name, he's our homegrown player and also Norbert Fahir, what an incredible growth in one season. He went from a 66 rated player to a 73 rated Player. Lucas Wilson's finishing is still only 63, so not really good enough. And we have some young players, youth academy players, that we will try to sell, or in the case of Balog, we will try to loan him out. Balog has incredible 89 to 94 potential. Johan Nessen, who you have seen him in season one, we promoted him. He also grew from 61 to 70 rated. Absolutely insane growth by Johan Nessen and I'm really looking forward to developing him as well. And Leeds United managed to win the FA Cup. Absolutely incredible achievement by Leeds United. So they will play European football next season as well. We got knocked out by Leeds United, but now that feels a little bit better because we got knocked out by the eventual winners who beat Manchester United in the final. Imagine the Leeds fans if that happened in real life. Absolutely amazing story. And we had a really good cup run in the FA Cup uh, in round five. But next season we will try to get to the semi-finals at least of either the League Cup or the FA Cup. That is our main aim really. Liverpool won the League Cup final 3-0 against Aston Villa. So that is quite amazing. Uh, they beat Arsenal in the semi-finals as well. So Manchester City won the Premier League, but Liverpool finished in third and at least Liverpool won a trophy. They won the League Cup and you will see very soon how they finished in the Champions League. So the preseason tournament, we didn't get out of the group stage as you can see. And the UEFA Super Cup was lost by Liverpool. They lost to Real Sociedad. Now that is a little bit of a blow, but the biggest blow is Real Madrid beat Liverpool in the Champions League final, just like in real life. Absolutely crazy. And Liverpool beat Barcelona in the semi-finals, but that is heartbreaking that Real Madrid won the Champions League, just like in real life. Uh, FIFA is sometimes too realistic. Liverpool had a really big, hard run. They beat PSG and Barcelona on their way to the final, and they beat Athletic Bilbao 8-0. On aggregate and I still can't believe that Ferenc Varos will be in the Champions League in season 3 of this career mode probably a little bit prematurely so we will try to aim of course to qualify but if not third place will qualify us for the Europa League so our minimum requirement is to try and get European football for the spring and you know the second half of the season and Liverpool have won all of their games in the Champions League group stages just like in real life and Frankfurt won the Europa League just like in real life as well now what is amazing Frankfurt won the Europa League Real Madrid beat Liverpool 1-0 in the Champions League final just like in real life so this is absolutely crazy and uh, Man City went to the semi-finals of the Europa League where they beat where they got beaten by Frankfurt 6-1 on aggregate absolutely crazy what a run Frankfurt had in the competition and you can pause the screen at any time if you want to check out any of the results really in detail the conference league was won by Everton so Everton will play European football after all even though they finished in seventh place in the Premier League because Leeds won the FA Cup, I thought 7th doesn't qualify for Europe, but because Everton won the Conference League, they will play Europa League football, so Everton won their first trophy 
since 1995 in this career mode. Absolutely incredible scenes, really. And here you can see all the different competitions, uh, top scorers. I don't want to talk uh, too much about it, uh, really, because we haven't been you know, too far into the competitions of the FA Cup and the League Cup, but you can see all the top scorers of the FA Cup, the League Cup, the Champions League, the Europa League, the European Conference League. I just like to show you this. Uh, the Champions League top scorer was Mo Salah, absolutely amazing. And Benzema was uh, was the top assist guy in the Champions League this time. Quite amazing. And Alisson kept the most clean sheets, uh, but it's a shame that uh, Liverpool couldn't be win the Champions League in this career mode either. That's a real bummer. Yes, I'm still salty about Liverpool <laughs> losing to Real Madrid in the Champions League final. I'm still thinking about that game. How Liverpool very very came very very close to winning the Champions League. And there has been some really, really awesome uh, top scorers in the Conference League and in the Europe League. Our confidence rating of the manager is 96. I think that's the highest that I have ever had. We basically completed every single objective during the season. And remember, the objective was to finish in mid-table. So we massively overachieved finishing in fourth place. I think mainly because we, we had an amazing goalkeeper like Bulaci and what a season we had. We won the championship in season one and we finished in the top four in season two. I just can't wait what the next season will bring. And we managed to loan out Balog to Lance for a full year. So Balog will grow hopefully because he has 90 to 94 potential. Hopefully Balog will grow a lot on loan. And let's check out the other competitions. So Fulham and Crystal Palace got promoted from the championship and probably Brighton should be good enough to get promoted, but they, will, they finished in the playoff places as well. PSG won the French league as expected and um, Leipzig won the Bundesliga. Now that is an amazing, amazing achievement by Leipzig and Dortmund didn't even finish in the top four. So Dortmund won't play in the Champions League next season. Napoli won the Serie A, that is amazing. Leipzig winning the Bundesliga for the first time. Napoli winning the Serie A title for the first time since I think Diego Maradona was there. It's also pretty amazing. Celtic won the Scottish Premier League, congratulations to them. And finally, before we finish the episode, Atletico Madrid won La Liga. So quite a lot of unusual titles uh, for teams who don't usually win the title, but the Premier League was won by Man City, so no surprise there. Thanks for watching guys, that concludes season two of this career mode. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Have a nice day, see you later. Good night.